नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन टुडे डे एटी फोर दिस इज मंडे सूत्र डिस्कशन वी बीन डिस्कसिंग लॉट ऑफ सूत्र फॉर द पैस्ट फ्यू मंथ एंड पैस्ट यू नो फ्यू इयर्स सो इन टूडे इज टॉक विथ रिगार्ड टू पर्टिकुलर सूत्र आई बी डिस्कसिंग you know uh what are some of the basic and important things of uh, four nutrients uh in the context of uh, pati samuppada uh, dependent dependent origination or dependent coarsing so uh, the topic for today uh is four nutrients uh, which means chattaru ahara in pali in the context of dependent origination and the sutta that i uh, will be uh, discussing for this uh, topic is ahara sutta ahara means uh, nutriment not nu- not nutrient nutriment okay let's take a look at the sutta savatyam chattaro me bikave ahara bhutanam va sattanam titiya sambhavesi nam va anugahaya thus have i heard on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling at savatthi in jetas grove anadha pindika spa and then buddha addressed the monks monks there are these four kinds of uh, nutriment for the maintenance of beings that have already come to be and for the assistance of those about to come to be so there are two kinds of beings that buddha talk about uh, with regard to nutriment uh they are the beings who already uh born and the beings who are going to be born and uh, the two pali words uh, are interesting uh, they are sattanam uh, titiya sambhavesina so bhutanam va sattanam sambhavesina so bhutanam sattanam so bhuta bhuta in this context means the the beings who already uh, born and sambhavi sina means the the beings who are going to be born and we uh, find this particular uh, word called sambhavi si in the karaniya metta sutta uh, when we uh, uh, you know uh, spread loving kindness uh, we know that we have to spread loving kindness even for those beings who are going to be reborn um bhuta va sambhavi si va sambhi satta bhavantu sukhitatta so it's pretty clear how uh, uh it it is mentioned in the metta sutta so basically buddha says uh the four nutrients are common to uh the beings who already born and who going to be uh born okay katame chattaru kabalinkaru aharu olariko wa sukumo wa passo dutiyo मनो संचेतना तथिया विज्ञानं चतुर्थं इमे को बिक्कवे चत्तारु आहारा भूतानं वा सत्तानं तथिया संभवेसीनं वा अनुग्रहाय सो लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट ऑफ व्हाट दीस न्यूट्रिमेंट्स आर द फर्स्ट न्यूट्रिमेंट इज खबलिंकारु आहारु ओलारिको वा सुकुमो वा सो खबलिंकारु आहारु व्हाट डज इट मीन द न्यूट्रिमेंट एडिबल फूड so it kabaling kar uh, kabaling karu ahara means uh, edible food so you can uh, eat but what kind of uh, edible food ola rikova sukumo so there are two uh, sub types of uh, you know edible food ola rika means gross and sukuma means subtle so the uh, the food could be uh, two fold uh, ola rika food means uh, you know gross type of food and uh, 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 sukuma uh, mean subtle type of uh, edible food now we know uh, the beings like the devas and brahmas uh, they don't eat 
uh, gross type of food because their bodies are very subtle so they are not uh, uh, able uh, to eat uh, gross type of food and I also know that when you have a body which uh, uh, con need to consume gross type of food uh, that means those bodies are really uh, susceptible to uh, panchakamas like uh, now, now the bodies uh, which we carry uh, at this point in this life our bodies are really I mean far more susceptible to uh, panchakamas five sensual pleasures but when you take it to the devas and the brahmas they have subtle bodies they don't uh, have a lot of uh, karmas for the food right but anyways uh, sukuma means there are a uh, type of edible food which you call uh, sukuma subtle type of food so the first nutriment is kabbaling kara kabbaling kara means edible food which has two types uh, gross type of uh, uh, edible food and subtle type of uh, uh, edible food that's the first second passo dutiyo passo aspirin passa means contact second contact so contact means uh, <clears throat> you know uh, you need contact uh, for your sensory uh, you know uh, process let's say uh, you know uh, if you take a very uh, popular definition of uh, sensory sensory process uh, from even Madhupindika Sutta in Majimani Kaya you can see when uh, any of your uh, sense faculties take objects uh, from outside and then what happened Chakkuncha Paticcha Rupe I mean if you say for instance we take uh, eyes Chakkuncha Paticcha Rupe Uppajjati Chakku so whenever your eyes uh, you know uh, take uh, you know forms of sight then what happened this uh, amalgamation will produce a chakuvinya but still there is no uh, involvement of uh, passive contact but what immediately happens when there is a particular sensory uh, consciousness is that the contact influences that particular sensory consciousness in this case chakuvinya tinnang sangati passo so uh, when there is uh, an involvement, uh, you know, among any uh, sense faculty and then uh, the relevant uh, uh, object and also uh, the relevant consciousness, uh, you know, the amalgamation of these three, uh, you know, make up contact. So contact is, uh, you know, uh, simply speaking, contact is a food. A nutriment but we'll be digging into what kind of a nutriment uh, uh, you know contact is uh, uh, you know um, uh, in our talk in our discussion so let's uh, dig into those kind of thing a little later but anyway keep in mind the second uh, nutriment is passa in other words contact and then mano sanchetana tatiya now I think this is uh, uh, you know, uh, always misconstrued by many people. Mano Sanchetana, some people talk about Gandhabas even with this particular word. But Mano Sanchetana basically means third mental volition. In in simple words, volition, Chetana, right? Uh, in, in, uh, in the simplest form, I would call it uh, intention, right? Intention. And uh, Tatiya, Vinyana. Tatiya, Mano Sanchetana Tatiya, Vinyanam Chatutta. And the fourth is, fourth nutriment is consciousness. So, what is this consciousness? Is this the consciousness that we are having whenever we, our sense faculties are uh, involving with uh, the external world? Uh, this is not that consciousness. This is the Bhavanga consciousness, um, you know, which can make uh, Nama Rupa in our next lives, right? So vinyana, so uh, vin, uh, uh, bhavanga vinyana, uh, in other words, you call ale vinyana in some other Buddhist philosophies. So uh, bhavanga vinyana uh, uh, also uh, is also uh, a nutriment. It also needs some particular, uh, you know, things uh, to run, to, to, to work inside of us. So anyways, imeko bhikkave chattaru ahara bhutanangva 
satanam tithya sambhavesi nangva anugrahaya. Now these four types of uh, nutrients are necessary for the beings who are already born and the beings who are going to be uh, born. Now the problem is who are they? I mean if we uh, think sambhavesi is only um, a human aspirant uh, then we have to think about that these beings are somewhere, I mean, in, in the form of a Gandhab, uh, a being who is looking for a, uh, you know, uh, comfortable and, 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 a, and a successful birth uh, uh, in the human world. But anyways, these two beings need uh, these four types of uh, nutrients. Now, the Sutta is trying to talk about the... Uh, the origin of, uh, you know, um, the nutrients and 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 the, and the origin of uh, the relevant other uh, conditional things. So we will be looking at all that uh, now. First, uh, let's take a look at the second uh, paragraph. Imeko bhikkave chattaru ahara. These four kinds of nutrients. Kin nidana. King Samudaya, King Jatika, King Pabava, Ime Chattaru Ahara, Tanha Nidana, Tanha Samudaya, Tanha Jatika, Tanha Pabava. Now, uh, we can easily understand that uh, it means uh, the origin, uh, uh, the birth and everything regarding uh, the nutrients, they come from uh, Tanha. Uh, they are effects of tanha, the craving. Now, uh, in the translation, it, it is given this way. These four kinds of nutriment have what as their source? What as their origin? Source means uh, nidana. Origin means samudaya. From what are they born and produced? From what are they born means kinchatika. Produced means kimpabava. And the answer is, these four kinds of nutriment have craving as their source. Tanha, craving as their origin, Tanha. They are born and produced from craving. So basically, because we had craving before, uh, maybe in a previous life, uh, that's why, because of that craving, we, uh, we were able to, um, you know, uh, consume these four types of nutrients, right? But the Sutta does not stop at this point. It wants to further study about the origin of uh, even Tanha, right? Tanha chayang bhikkavi kin nidana, kin samudaya, kin jatika, kin pabava. Tanha vedana nidana, vedana samudaya, vedana jatika, vedana pabava. So uh, it is clear that uh, craving arises because of uh, feeling. And this craving has what as its source, what as its origin, from what what is it born and produced. This craving has feeling as its source, feeling as its origin. It is born and produced from feeling. So because of the feelings, uh, tanha uh, arises, right? So uh, tanha uh, has uh, feeling. Uh, you know, uh, as its source, as it, uh, and as its origin, as its uh, birth, right, as its production. And the Buddha does not even stop at this level. He he further wants us to think about, consider how this is happening. And then, what is the origin of feeling then? Because we talk about the origin of ahara, that is tanha. We talk about the origin of craving, tanha, that is a feeling called vedana. Now, we're going to be looking at what is the origin of even the feeling. Passo chayang bhikkhavi kin nidano. Sorry, uh, vedana chayang bhikkhavi kin nidana, kin samudaya, kin jatika, kin pabava, vedana passa nidana, passa samudaya, passa jatika, passa pabava. That means uh, the, the origin or the source of uh, feeling is contact. Because of contact, uh, there arises feeling. It says, and this feeling has what as its source? Feeling has contact as its source. And this contact has what as its source? Contact has the sixth sense 
bases as its source. So when you, when you talk about pasa, it has six uh, sense bases. Uh, you know, uh, basically speaking, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So these are the six types of uh, contact that we uh, may have at different times, right? Now, uh, you know, if I make it uh, clear, when you have uh, uh, when you have a chakku vinyana, you will get this uh, chakku sampasa, right? Chak I mean, uh, right? And when you have uh, sota vinyana, you get sota sampasa. When you have uh, ghana vinyana, you, you will get uh, ghana sampasa. So uh, each uh, sensory uh, process has its own contact, right? So basically, there are six types of contact, pasa. And now, uh, now Buddha wants to talk about the the origin of even the contact, six type of contact. Pasu chayang bhikkhavi ke nidano, king samudeyo, king jatiko, king pabavo. Pasu salayatana nidano, salayatana samudeyo, salayatana jatiko, salayatana pabavo. Okay. Uh, contact has the six sense bases as its source and these six sense bases have what as their sources right so there are six uh, uh, places right uh, we, which we call by salayatana under the parisamuppa so these all come uh, under the parisamuppa the dependent origination and then what is the genesis what is the origin of even the uh, six uh, what do you call sense sense bases? Salayatanang chidang bikkavi king nidana king samudayam king jatika king pabavam salayatanang namarupa nidana namarupa samudaya namarupa jatika namarupa pabavam. So um, and uh, the six sense bases have name and form as their source. And this name and form has what as its so name and form has consciousness at it. So, so it is a consciousness which produces, uh, you know, six uh, sense bases. And then, what is the origin of uh, nama rupas, uh, right? Name and form. Nama rupang chidang bikkave king nidana king samudaya king jatika king pabava. Nama rupang vinyana nidana, vinyana samudhyang, vinyana jatika, vinyana pabo. So it is consciousness which uh, uh, causes uh, nama rupa, right? So because of uh, the consciousness, uh, there arises uh, name and form. It says uh, here. It is, uh, you know, uh, consciousness that uh, causes, uh, you know, Nama Rupa to arise. Okay. And then, Vinyanam Chidam Bhikkavi Kinnidanam King Samadayam King Jatikam King Pabhavan Vinyanam Sankhara Nidanam Sankhara Samadayam Sankhara Jatikam Sankhara Pabhavan So, what is basically the origin of uh, the consciousness it is <coughs> sankhara sankhara means formation i will be uh, explaining to you what the what the uh, sankhara uh, sankhara is because sankhara has uh, three main definitions uh, in uh, when it comes to parisamuppada dependent origination uh, there is a certain context out of those three definitions so basically uh, we'll be looking at uh, that context too and sankhara chim sankhara chimi bikkave king nidana king samudaya king jatika king pabava sankhara avicha nidana avicha uh, samudaya avicha jatika okay avicha pabava so what is the origin of uh, sankhara formations the origin of formation is uh, formations uh, is uh, ignorance, avijja. Okay, avijja means ignorance. It 
it says uh, consciousness has volitional formations as its source and these volitional formations have what as their source what as their origin from what are they born and produce volitional formations sankara have ignorance as their source ignorance as their origin they are born and produced from ignorance okay iti ko bikkave avicca pachya sankara sankara pachya vijnana etc etc eva metas kevalas dukkha khandas samudeyo hote now this is the uh, you know uh, most popular uh, way of uh, you know defining uh, the 12 components of uh, pati samuppada the dependent origination and and the buddha says that uh, the main origin i would say the root cause of uh, uh, you know the ahara is ignorance so because of ignorance all the uh, rest of the uh, effects uh, uh, you know will be produced okay and then at the end there will be uh, the mass of the mass of suffering dukkha kanda in order to uh in order to get rid of uh, this process of uh, you know mass of uh, suffering we call dukkha we have to uh, go uh, in a different way the reverse way avijjaya thiva sesa viragni nurdu sankhara we have to uh, we have to have this what you call um, i would say uh with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance we call asesa vidara nirodo and uh avijjayati asesa vidara nirodo sankhara nirodo which means um you got to uh, uh cease your volitional formations sankharas at the same time vinya nirodo cessation of uh, consciousness so such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering so we are looking at how we can get rid of this uh, uh mass suffering right dukkha khanda so dukkha khanda means when you take dukkha uh, in the context of 12 uh, components of 12 conditions of the parisamuppa that's how you you see uh, suffering or dukkha as a uh, mass uh, right okay so now we will be looking at uh, details of uh, our topic now kabalinkar ahar uh, we we basically know that it is uh, edible food and basically it helps our physical body and pasahara which means uh, contact we need contact right i uh, explained to you how uh, this contact arises so uh, contact arises uh, depending on your different uh, depending on the amalgam amalgamation of relevant uh, you know sensory process uh, for example i would say if uh, if you take uh, the process of eye then what happens whenever you eye and uh, the object called sight and uh, the eye consciousness uh, you know uh, get together because of the sensory process and there will be uh, the contact so uh, that contact will take you to uh, feeling right so that means whenever you uh whenever you are taking objects whenever your bhavanga is not uh only working uh, you know within you you are uh, creating chitta vritis and then what happens uh, you are uh, open uh, opening up your senses uh, to the outside world external world and then you are getting mental food so we call it uh, mental body so you have a physical body and you have you have a mental body so with kabalinkara ahara edible food you are uh, giving nutriment to uh, physical body and with pasahara the contact i would say mental uh, sorry uh, the, the six type of contact you are giving food to your mental body so i would say more than we eat edible food we are consuming uh uh food for our mental body because we are let's say you eat a couple times a day but but you are having lot of food when it comes to the mental body true contact because you are uh enjoying relishing your 
senses. So every time you relish your senses, then what happens? You are uh, getting mental food, which you call pasa, contact. Every time you have, uh, when uh, I mean your senses and your objects, particular objects and your particular consciousnesses, then what happened? These three make up, uh, produce a particular uh, contacts. So that means you are having more contacts. Uh, I would say you are having more food for your mental body than the physical body, I would say, by Kabbalika Rahar. Then what is Mano Sanchetana Hara? Now, Mano Sanchetana Hara means uh, volition. Basically, you are intention. Now, whenever you are intentional in your thoughts uh, or in other activities, you are producing Mano Sanchetana Hara, which means uh, you are creating, uh, uh, you know, three types of worlds for your next life. Kama Loka, Rupa Loka, Arupa Loka. So, uh, because you haven't stopped your Kama, right? So, Mano Sanchetana Ahara basically means you are accumulating. So, basically, that is intention. Whenever you are intentional, you are creating Mano Sanchetana Ahara. Uh, I think we are intentional for the most time. Uh, if you uh, consider a day, uh, whenever you talk to other people, whenever you see things, whenever you hear things, hear things, whenever you smell things, whenever you whenever you um, taste things, food, whenever you, uh, you um, feel something, whenever you uh, think thoughts, uh, you are intentional for the most part. That means you have, you are producing uh, Manusanchetana Hara, right? So whenever you are creating Manusanchetana Hara, uh, keep, the, keep in mind that you are creating future lives. Uh, Kama Loka, Rupa Loka, Arupa Loka. So that is on, on a different level, uh, dangerous because I know that uh, it is impossible, uh, you know, straightforwardly, uh, forwardly to stop uh, all this manu But uh, if uh, we are, uh, you know, making uh, intentional bad things, then uh, we are already creating our next life uh, in a very bizarre way, in a very, uh, you know, difficult, in a very dangerous way. So we have to be careful when it comes to Mano Sanchetana. And Vinyana Har basically means, uh, this is called rebirth consciousness or Bhavanga Vinyana. And beca because you are feeding your uh, rebirth consciousness called uh, Bhavanga Vinyana, then what happens? Uh, it keeps running, it keeps going, right? Okay, so... Uh, Let's take a look at our uh, Kabalikara Hara again, the edible food. Now, you know that, uh, okay, uh, before I'm uh, jumping into these, uh, you know, individual Dharma factors, uh, nutrients, I want to tell you that uh, in the description of this video, you can see some of the corresponding videos uh, for this talk. Uh, because if somebody wants to uh, learn, uh, want to learn more about uh, some of the things that we will be discussing, uh, they need to, uh, uh, you know, check, uh, watch these videos uh, for uh, more explanations. So I'm going to uh, read uh, the names of these videos. 28 material phenomena, Rupa and 21 grouping of mater material phenomena, Rupa Kalapa. So this is one of the videos that I did uh, for the Abhidhamma. Uh, so uh, you can see that link so if you want to uh, watch learn more about uh, ahara because ahara is one of the uh, you know uh, elements uh, in the uh, the pure octad right so uh, the first four uh, they are the great essentials uh, what we call patavit apotejo vayu and the and the rest of the four uh, we call vanaganda rasa oja uh, call um, let me split you that. Uh, and then the last one is called uh, Ahara. Uh, so it's a, it's, we, we call it a nutri, uh, uh, nutritive uh, essence, right? So then if you want to learn more about Kabbalika Ahara edible food in a, in a more materialistic way uh, with respect to Buddhist teachings, you need to uh, watch that uh, video, uh, which I did, uh, I guess, a month ago. 
uh, under the Abhidharma series. And the second video I recommend to you uh, to watch is what are the nutrients ahara to five hindrances and the seven awakening factors which I did on August 17, 2020. So you can uh, click that video too. That was one of the videos I did in this series. And the last video I wanna I want to uh, recommend to you to watch uh, after watching this is what does Parisamuppada dependent origination arising discuss dukkha or dukkha kanda which I did uh, on July 7, 2020. So that video also very interesting to learn more about the uh, Parisamuppada to get a clear understanding of Parisamuppada because I am not going to repeat all that in this video. So. Uh, if you have uh, more time, spare time, please uh, 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 watch those videos too. Okay. So, now, uh, Kabalinkara Ahara, which means uh, edible food. So, uh, it is also part of the pure octad, uh, which comes in the uh, root analysis. It is the eight uh, element. So, you got to watch that video. Then you will understand because... We know that uh, Ahara has the Juha Pasada, which are called tongue sensitivity, right? So there is a tongue sensitivity when you eat. So basically it is edible food. And then I want to talk about uh, uh, a specific Dhamma matter, which is pretty interesting uh, out of all this. Now, you know the basic meanings of uh, ahara element I would say nutrients but when you take a look at of tanha now we know craving is the cause of all our problems Buddha mentioned many times there are two uh, you know uh, there are two serious uh, things that we need to consider they are avijja and tanha Avijja, Nivarnana, Satana, and Tanha, Sangajana. So the Buddha says that that Avijja, uh, Avijja is a is a hindrance to beings to understand the reality, and then because Avijja is hindering uh, us uh, or covering us, uh, you know, uh, to see the reality, and then. Uh, because we are not understanding uh, what is the reality, what is, uh, you know, uh, the objectivity of uh, the truth, then what happens? Tanha, craving, binds us to sansara. Tanha sanyojanana. So tanha is a, is a what you call uh, a fetter at that point, and then uh, avijja is a hindrance. So avijja and tanha, they work together. So because of avicca, we are in tanha. So we have to work towards these two. We need to get rid of these two to uh, liberate from the sansara. And also, if you take a look at of the uh, tanha, craving, when it comes to patisamuppada, it is not the three types of cravings we know in the uh, Dhamma Chakka Pautana Sutta. In Dhamma Chakka Pautana Sutta, we know there are three types of uh, craving. Kama tanha, bhava tanha, vibhava tanha. Uh, craving for the sensual pleasures, craving for uh, becoming, and craving for not becoming. But when you take a look at of the parisamuppada, uh, the particular tanha part, uh, component in the parisamuppada, that is not those type of three tanha, but, but they lead to those three types of tanha. But specifically talking, parisamuppada's tanha is rupa tanha, sabda tanha, gandha tanha, rasa tanha, Pottabhatanha, uh, Dhammatanha. So they are the cravings with regard to the particular uh, objects, sense objects, right? And uh, because we, we are talking about, uh, you know, nutrients uh, in the context of dependent origination, so we have to specifically look at uh, how Parisamuppada presents all these factors, Dhamma factors. And and out of all these, I want to talk about Sankhara. The Sankhara is very interesting because we find out Sankhara at many, uh, you know, uh, places and and they have different meanings. So the, so the first thing I want to share with you is that the first uh, context of Sankhara. 
the first context of sank Sankara is how does Parisamuppada present Sankara in uh, those 12 components. Avicca, Pachya, Sankara, because of ignorance, there arises Sankara, formations. But what is this formation? What are these formations which come under Parisamuppada? They are not conditioned things. They are not uh, what you call uh, formations we know under Panchakkanda, fire aggregates. So Sankara, formations which come under Parisamuppada are uh, threefold. Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara, Mano Sankara. Uh, we call body conditioner, uh, that is Kaya Sankara, and Vachi Sankara means verbal conditioner, and uh, Mano Sankara means mind conditioner. What is, uh, what is Kaya Sankara? Kaya Sankara means Asasa Pasasa, in and out breath. So that is Kaya Sankara. So, in the Parisamuppada, uh, what we have to understand by Kaya Sankara, the, one part, the first part of Sankara, is uh, in and out breath. So, uh, uh, we always uh, breathe in and breathe out. So, that is Kaya Sankara, right? So, we need uh, in and out breathing. And Vachi Sankara means Vitakka and Vichara. This is something that we really want. These are the two things we really want when it comes to uh, uh, the speech. So we, we break out into speech because of vitakka and vichara. Vitakka means initial uh, thought and vichara means the sustained thought. We call it gliding, gliding part of the uh, thought. So what is sankara? And mano sankara means sanya and vedana, perceptions and feelings. Now, if you can look at off, uh, uh, the first uh, and the second verses in the Dhammapada, Mano Pubbangama Dhamma, Mano Setta Mano Maya. So, Mano Pubbangama Dhamma, so Dhamma in, in, in those two stanzas mean not the doctrine. Dhamma means Sanya and Vedana, perceptions and feelings. Okay, so that is the context of Sankara in the Patisamuppada. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that is what uh, arises because of avicca. Okay, because of avicca you won't get the panchakkanda. Because of avicca you uh, you are uh, persuaded to uh, have the kaya sankara, vachi sankara, mano sankara. Then we move on to the uh, you know uh, the second context of uh, sankara that is. Panchakkanda, five aggregates. Everybody knows uh, Rupa Kanda, Vedana Kanda, Sanya Kanda, Sankara Kanda, Vinyana Kanda. So the five aggregates, uh, what you call um, Rupa, form, Vedana, feeling, Sanya, perception, Sankara. Then again, see, formation. But this is not that formation that we know in the uh, Parisampada. Vinyana is consciousness. Now, how, how can we understand Sankara part of the Panchakkanda? Okay, so sankara when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, panchakanda means volitional formation. That means uh, rupa sankara, sabda sankara, gana, rasa, potabba, dhamma. So all of them, uh, uh, all of them create volitional formations, right? That is why we can see there is. Uh, this thing called Sankhara in the Panchakkanda. So because of Rupa, because of Sadda, because of Gandha, because of Rasa, because of Pottabha, because of Dhamma, called all the objects of sense, senses, they create volitional formations, right? Let's say when I see something, someone, when I hear something, when I uh, smell something, when I taste something, when I uh, feel something, when I... Uh, when I have a thought, at all these times, what happens is that I am creating a formation, which you call volitional formation. This is not the formation that we have to understand with the Parisampa. But if, <clears throat> in conclusion of that particular context of Sankara, we have to take all the rest of the four aggregates are also Sankara. Because if you take Rupakhanda, 
Vedanakanda, Sanyakanda, Vinyanakanda, they all create. They all create. They all, what do you call, they are fabricated or put together or fabricate things in, in our mind. So because of that, not even the Sankara part of uh, the Panchakanda uh, is going to be uh, volitional formation. As a whole, we can see all the rest of the Kandas also, uh, you know, uh, indirect uh, fabrications, formations. Okay, that's the second thing. Second context of the Sankara. The third context is very uh, popular because we know we all are conditioned. Sankha, we all are Sankharas. Now, if you can remember the last uh, word of the Buddha, Vaidhamma Sankhara Appamadena Sampadeta. Right? Buddha said that every uh, phenomenon, every, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, every conditioned thing is subject to uh, changes, right? So we all are conditioned. Uh, the only thing that is not conditioned is Nibbana. So uh, the third context of Sankara is, uh, uh, you know, uh, every uh, phenomenon or thing or uh, person, anything uh, which is created by something else, they all are Sankara's conditioned things. So they are subject to changes. So that is the third uh, context. So let's take a look at our uh, uh, Sutta for that. Uh, Sangyutta Nikaya 2279.79 Kincha Bikkave Sankhare Vedet Sankhatam Abhisankharunti Bikkave And why do you call them fabrications, formations? Because they fabricate things. Thus, they are called fabrications. So, uh, you know, uh, they fabricate. Now, if you take a look at of, uh, any phenomenon, any person, anything in our world, uh, you can see that uh, they all are fabricated uh, by uh, different people, different things. Or maybe another process, right? On top of that, uh, there are other things too uh, which can happen to uh, processes. So, which means uh, the third context of Sankara is, uh, you know, conditionality. So, that is Sankara. Okay? So, uh, there are two types of uh, two sorry two aspects of sankhara as well sankhara by their nature uh, are, are two two type two kinds sankharas on the level of the world and sankharas on the level of the dhamma so that's interesting because uh, there are sankharas fabrications that we can see uh, on the level of the world and the sankharas on the level of the dhamma right uh, but uh, one interesting thing that we need to understand is uh, uh, Sankara also includes uh, merits. I mean, the good karma to A lot of people don't understand this because any karma that we make uh, will produce Sankaras, right? Uh, this is uh, one reference to that, uh, you know, thought. Paribhi Mansana Sutta Sanyutta Nika, SN 12. 12.51 in that sutta we can see this reference quotation we take this quotation avijja gato yang bikkave purisa pukkaro punyanche sankharang abhisankaro monks if a person immersed in ignorance generates a meritorious formation now uh, now we all know that buddha asks us to uh, specifically uh, execute uh, you know engage in uh, Kusala activities. Uh, when you are trying to fulfill uh, what you call uh, more meritorious activities, you will be taken by meritorious activities into the sansara. But but there is no harm in doing uh, you know meritorious activities. But the problem is, uh, you know, uh, meritorious formation is also a formation. It's a fabrication too. Because then you will be uh, you will be experiencing uh, meritorious formation in your sansara. So that's what happens when you do uh, even punya. That's why we always uh, ask people to uh, you know do uh, engage in kusal activities. There are ten kusal activities, right? Not killing, not stealing, not uh, misbeh sorry, not misbehaving. 
these are the three uh, particular uh, skillful activities for the body and not uh, lying not talking behind the back not uh, talking hurtful words not uh, being a gossiper or an idle chatter those four skillful activities are for the uh, speech and not uh, being envious not being uh, uh, you know uh, what do you call not being envious and not uh, having thoughts of destroying other people and not uh, having the wrong uh, view that's called maturity they are for the uh, mind so if somebody can only perform uh, put these uh, the opposite side i mean the good side of these 10 into practice you are less likely to uh, you know fabricate you are less likely to form uh, I mean, what do you call uh, sankharas? So sankharas are dangerous. And <clears throat> the Dhammapada 2 or 3 verse mentions this. Sankhara parama dukha nibbana parama sukha. So we talk about nibbana as the ultimate uh, happiness, right? Uh, the most uh, happiness. Also, the worst suffering is sankhara sankhara paramaduka nibbana is the stilling of sankhara so we have a uh, we have a challenge uh, our sansara challenge is to beat sankhara uh, right our challenge of sankhara is to beat the sankhara challenge of sansara is to beat the sankhara because uh, if you if you if you put nibbana here the opposite is sankhara so sankhara has both merit demerit uh, but if you do kusalas, because you are trying to reduce your, what do you call, uh, akusalas, uh, that will take you to Nibbana, right? So, uh, but you have to understand is that the worst suffering in our uh, life is uh, our involvement with uh, formations, sankharas. Uh, and the most happiness that we can have in our li sansara life is Nibbana. Another uh, quotation, SN 38.14, which means the Sangyata Nikaya 38.14, Dukkha Sutta. In this Sutta, Buddha talks about three types of uh, Dukkhas. Tisso Ima Aosu Dukkata, Dukkha Dukkata, Sankhara Dukkata, Viparinama Dukkata. Now, Buddha mentions uh, Dukkha is... Uh, you know uh, uh, categorically uh, three types dukkha dukkata means suffering due to or about pain now this is what we know basically about uh, you know uh, uh, the main types of uh, dukkhas right and the second is sankhara dukkata suffering due to or about mental uh, formations right called uh, concocting mental uh, formation so now because of sankhara punya or apunya uh, aninja which is called neither meritorious nor uh, uh, demeritorious uh, whatever sankhara they include under sankhara so those sankhara will create uh, suffering at some point viparinama dukkata suffering due to change right so change is a big problem to many so uh, uh, there are three types of suffering dukkha dukkata suffering due to uh, about pain sankhara dukkata suffering due to about mental concocting or uh, formation viparinama dukkata suffering due to change right that is dukkha so the, i want you to show you that sankhara is the worst suffering and you might perhaps uh, think that uh, there are other uh, types of suffering like jati birth uh, decay uh, illnesses that they, they are the main types of uh, you know sorry but what about like what you have to experience between your birth and the death they all are sankharas they all are uh, effects of your previous sankharas or maybe the sankharas you are doing now another sutta which is called uh, Arya Pariyasana Sutta uh, which is Majjhima Nikaya 26 which is one of the very uh, interesting suttas about noble search there is a word called sabba sankhara samato so this is kind of a definition about nibbana now when we talk about nibbana this word this this uh, 
particular wording is very popular. Sabha Sankhara Samatha. Sabha Sankhara means all mental formations. Samatha is calming. So we have to calm all the mental formations. How can we calm our mental formations? We should not make, we should not form, we should not fabricate new Sankharas. Right? That's why uh, it is said that Punya Papa Pahina says, Arhans and these noble uh, individuals, they they do not create punya or papa, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, kusala is encouraged, right? So uh, what we have to do is using kusala aspect, 10 kusala activities, we got to calm our mental formations. Uh, I mean, the mental formations we are suffering, we are experiencing now. And also, uh, we're going to talk about uh, one last thing. That is... Uh, what what can we do with our sankhara? Is there a, a practical thing that we can do? Yes, that is what I call by vipassana. There is another video that I did about vipassana. I I, I did not uh, uh, post it here, but you can just go to the YouTube channel, part of the YouTube channel. You can watch it. You can do something to calm your uh, uh, sankhara called formations. That is what you call by vipassana. When you become aware of impermanence means you become aware of sankharas. So whenever you can be aware of uh, impermanence of anything, anicca nature of people, things, situations, events of your life, that means you are aware of sankharas. People are creating sankharas when they do not understand uh, the impermanence aspect of uh, those things. Now, uh, be that a good thing, or a bad thing, but whenever people don't understand the anicca, impermanence nature, you know, changing nature of that particular event. Let's say somebody gets angry, what immediately arises in the mind of the other person who is uh, the victim of that particular anger is that he or she is going to react to that particular thing. But if they understand, this anger will pass. This is not permanent. This anger will pass. So then I have to wait. But people don't wait. People are going to react uh, immediately. What about if you um, uh, like a particular person, if you like a particular thing or a food or a particular thought, you are not always trying to think that there is this impermanence in nature with regard to uh, this particular person, event, situation. You think that this is permanent, this will last, so that you are... Uh, uh, you know, uh, succumb to sankharas, which is not good. So the only thing that you can calm your sankharas is by being aware, by putting your thoughts on the impermanence of the particular person, uh, event, uh, situation, uh, and all the phenomena. So then you will know that this is sankhara because you've got to see the impermanence of that particular thing, event, situation, person. So use vipassana, what you call anicca, uh, then you will be able to uh, understand uh, the sankharas. Not even anicca. You can all, you can further go on to dukkha, an, uh, anatta uh, perspectives too. But I, I, I ask you to start from anicca, uh, impermanence. And dukkha means because of impermanence, they are uh, leading to dissatisfaction, unsatisfactoriness. And then finally, they all lead to uh, anatta, non-self. So if you can... If you can put all that uh, into uh, your perspective of, uh, you know, looking at somebody, judging something, uh, you know, feeling something or experiencing something, then, of course, you will uh, be aware of sankhara because, you know, whenever you understand anything, any person, even with vipassana, that means you are aware of. Uh, sankhara. So you you are calming your sankhara slowly, gradually. One day you will uh, tap into a serious meditation and you will be able to attain Nibbana and so on. Okay, any questions? Any questions about uh, today's topic? Uh, this is uh, Ahara Sutta. We talked about uh, four nutrients and how how we can see the origin of four nutrients based on the Parisamuppada origination. 
And we also talked about uh, formations, which you call uh, sankhara in three as three definitions. The first definition uh, is really uh, relevant to parisampada. The second is relevant to panchakka, the five aggregates. Uh, and the third definition is the uh, formal definition of all the conditioned things, persons. It seems there are no questions. So let's uh, close uh, today's the discussion by sharing good karmas with the departed people and the deities. May all the good karmas we've been accumulating in all these ways be shared by all the departed or those who passed away in the name of all of you. May they be happy and peaceful. May they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nang hutu, sukita huntu nyatayu. Idam me nyati nang hutu, sukita huntu nyatayu. Idam me nyati nang hutu, sukita huntu nyatayu. We also share all the good karmas with the deities and nagas who protect all of us. May all the Nagas and Dev Devas and Nagas uh, share in all these good karmas and may they be happy and peaceful. We know that Devas and Nagas also wanted to attain Sotapanna and the, and, the, and the rest of the attainments. So we will wish them all the uh, happiness and courage, strength uh, for those uh, good, good uh, you know, attempts in attaining Nibbana. At the same time, may they all bless and wish uh, our uh, humankind and everything every being in this universe, may they also attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ittavata cha ammehi sambhatang punya sampadang sabi deva anumodantu sabi bhuta anumodantu sabi satta anumodantu sabi sampatti siddhya aka satta cha bummatta deva naga mahindika Punyantang Anumo Ditva Chirang Rakang Tulukasa Sanang Chirang Rakang Tudi Sanang Chirang Rakang Tumang Paranti. Finally, let's make a great wish. May all the good karmas we've been accumulating in all these ways uh, uh, be helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. I'm going to be blessing you with a couple more stanzas. Please receive the blessings. Abhivat in a silis nichang vadha pachainu Chataru dhamma vadhanti Ayuvanu sukhang balang Ayuraru kisampati Saka sampati me vache Atu nibbana sampati Iminati samigishatu Sadu 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 Okay, thank you for joining me and then uh, wish you a very safe time and uh, be safe, stay safe too. Have a good night and uh, have a good uh, day for those who join information.